Remember, with Renaissance, going green saves you money. So we're looking at here today is a four-pole senior kit that we have. The reason why we don't have the frame for it is because the frame that we make, uh, which is over here somewhere, you can see that doesn't line up because this rotor um, was the first prototype rotor and we made it a bit smaller for various reasons. So I made up some oak frame here and what we have is it hooked up to a wind generator. This is a 400 watt wind generator and there's just a little bulb on there and I have a pot to adjust it and it's three phase so I just rectified that like an alternator to DC and that's not a very efficient motor compared or a generator but we wanted to just try that out uh, in the course of building this I blew out a couple transit connected up here and um, we have four switches here this is the master coil and circuit board which is over there and when we ran this with all the um, coils positioned equally like in the same positions then it didn't have very much mechanical power as we showed in the other videos so I advanced it and before I advanced it I actually held it in my hand and I was able to um, get quite a bit more power yet if I advanced a little bit further but I didn't have time before Earth Day which I brought this over to the Earth Day presentation or um, Earth Day um, display yesterday um, and so we're going to run it just as we have it right now and we'll run another video later on of it advanced a little bit more but let's just get the idea here we got only 12 volts so this is um, capable of a lot higher voltage input and output and um, I would like to run it at least 48 volts when I do that again I take off the neon bulbs I just So I just clip off the neon bulbs if I go to higher voltage and otherwise they'll start blowing out at 36 or 48 volts. What I have here on the base resistors is 5 ohms only and then I have a 100 ohm pot, 50 watt I believe, or 100 watt, somewhere it says there three amps maximum anyway this is kind of pushing it pretty hard 12 volts I don't mind so much but at 24 volts I'd have to go with a higher um, that's only actually 10 ohm pot sorry it's not a 100 ohm pot so I'd probably use that pot over there I was using that the other day and pushing it pretty hard and, and I could see that it was getting red <laughs> So I was pushing it too hard, so I just used this pot instead. But we can use those resistors I have here uh, that I provide in the kit as well, these 50-watt resistors of various values. But I'm going to push this. Now I could make the gap a little bit closer on this coil and this coil as well. Um, these other coils are just right but one eighth of an inch gap is what I want but of course when I was drilling this I didn't quite get it lined up exactly where I wanted it to be but I could fix that later on anyway we're just going to show the basic system running in this case I don't have the input hardwired down because if I have to disconnect it quickly I want to be able to do that instead of having it screwed down the output I want to have hardwired because that is um, I don't want to let uh, disconnect that otherwise I'll blow up the circuits <coughs> while it's running so here we have the trigger wire coming or going to the four switches that turn on each board and then the other trigger wire 
coming from the master coil is going to the pot here, or the big rheostat. So we're going to look at some voltages here on the input. This battery's been drained a little bit, as you'll see. Um, and this one, we'll see. Get both battery or terminals hooked up here. So that one has already been charged like crazy with this battery. I just ran it before I started the video. So this has been supercharged, this battery, and this one. Um, I should swap them around. You should really always have a charged battery in here, but I'm not going to run it too long. Um, I'm going to push about 20 amps on this thing um, because I don't have it uh, perfectly tuned yet. Just to get it started though, this thing takes a lot to get started. So we're going to turn on the master coil and then we're going to start the resistance on the, on the full, but you can hear it thumping here. So we can turn this. So now as I turn each switch on, it's going to kind of want to build up. Build up a little speed, and then I'll turn the other switch on. So you can hear it going here. You can see the charging or the primary battery is being really drawn down. But see now that didn't want to go there yet. Just want to make sure everything's right. So I'll turn this down now. Now I can go up. So you can see it's really pulling that battery down, but this one on the other hand is really being charged. So this light is at about full brightness, but I'm going to... Whoa! So that's like a one amp bulb or more, two amps. So now we're going to look at the charging. Of course, this is going to be really high. See, we're already at 18 volts here. Um, in, in danger of sizzling this battery away. But this is a pretty powerful motor. Um, if I get my gaps a little bit better and I advance a little bit further, it'll be, and especially if I go higher voltage, it will go, it'll be really. So we want to play around again with this pot, but you can see. It's still going up speed. And then we want to measure the temperature, make sure everything's nice and cool in here. Of course, it's 80 degrees today, so I'm sure all of our coils are just cool. This right here, you can see this is a little bit stressed. Batteries. Of course, I just started it, so it's not going to be doing getting warm that fast. But you can feel this pot is kind of hot. So you can just hear it. Now there's a little piece of plastic rubbing against the rotor there for the ticking sound. So we could put various loads on the back of this. I
started putting larger loads on it yesterday, but I don't have that right now. But again, primarily this is a charger, not so much of a motor, until we you know, advance the coil and do various things to it. But like I said, you want to have, obviously this battery is really charged right now. And uh, you'd want to have several batteries here, or batteries of much greater capacity, of course, discharged, not fully charged. See, now that I turned down that pot a little bit, it wasn't pushing it as high. It's still almost 18 volts there. And this one, you can see 11.65. So let's start to turn this down. You can hear it going down. So you want to be very careful when you're going down to the base resistors that are only 5 ohm. Um, you want to be really careful with your final resistor here. You should really have a bulb in series with it and that sort of protects it just in case you were to turn this too far or somehow bridge that, that gap there. Um, it will blow your transistors when it's that low. Now the reason for the low resistors here is because when we add more and more circuit boards to it then um, you need to um, share the load more and uh, therefore you don't need as much power. It really depends on how fast you're spinning and that's the thing if you're putting a load on it you're not going to spin it as fast so it's kind of a balancing act because we don't have hall switching here to turn it on and off, we have to deal with um, changing RPMs, and therefore we have to compensate here and turn one on and, and change the resistances around as we're getting it started. So you can have several different resistors and then create switches if you wanted to instead of using a pot like that, and, uh, and then just flip it. Um, going from a, a lower value to get started to a higher value once it gets up to speed. So that's the four pole senior and the senior is just a, a wider rotor with bigger magnets and um, bigger wire as opposed to the junior. And again it can go probably comfortably past 100 volts probably like 150 volts if you're really careful and you just have to play around with the um, trigger resistances and again you always start with one coil before you add the other coils and you can do that by just turning the switch off and then once you've really played around with one board and one coil you can start to add a second board starting with higher resistances and then going down to lower ones to make sure that you don't over um, overdo it because once you add a second board suddenly there's a whole lot more speed to it a lot more power being drawn so you don't want to you want to be really careful but also suddenly you're sharing all the the load on the basis of the transistors and so you'll need to adjust your pot again every time you do that so it's a little bit of playing around with, but it's kind of fun to learn that as long as you're careful and you don't blow out transistors. We're also um, making the boards now, in a way you can see the transistors are fairly, they're far away from the board there. And that way it makes it easier to, if you blow blew one out, like I blew this one out and I blew this one out. And so I can just cl clip the legs off and unscrew that fairly easy. Uh, the other reason for doing this is now I can actually mount these transistors this way onto a, a flat heat sink, you know, with the ribs in it and, and have a lot more cooling taking place. Because if you push this um, 
right now we're only doing about one amp per transistor maximum is what I was doing uh, the other day and that's an that's enough to keep it fairly cool it's not going to get too hot with that but if you're starting to go up to two amps or three amps per transistor you're going to get really hot and you're going to have to put a fan there and then change the the heat sinks around so that's what we're doing with that can't think of anything else we'll add another video later on when we get this thing all finalized